Hello. In this movie, uh, we're gonna continue our discussion about um, judgment proof problem. So last time, um, we talked about judgment proof problem under strict liability, and and I couldn't finish. Uh, I couldn't finish uh, the discussion. One of the important discussions. So let me uh, briefly. Uh, uh, talk about uh, what I did uh, last time. So if there is a judgment proof problem, so it means injurious asset is lower than the possible liability. Um, in this case, we have injurious problem is injurious wants to maximize uh, his expected payoff. So uh, this is injurious problem and make sure we have u here so this is a uh, injurious problem and we find the first order condition and the first order condition says uh, uh, this uh, is uh, so we take derivative and set it equal to zero to find the max and we get this equation and let's say uh, solution to this equation is x hat. And we know that um, uh, the equation for uh, the equation for social optimum is this, right? So equation for the social optimum is this. So we can see that, so what we saw was by comparing these two equations, we can see that um, uh, x hat uh, is less than x star. So when there is judgment proof problem, uh, the injury uh, tends to be uh, uh, less careful. So uh, injury choice of care becomes lower. So he's going to be less careful than socially optimal. So we saw this, and, and what is the relationship between u uh, and the x hat? So remember, uh, so this is the solution, right? So this is a solution. This is solution uh, when uh, Injury has judgment proof problem, so u is less than h, right? And make sure x hat is less than x star. Then what's gonna happen to x hat when u gets lower? So So in the x-axis we have u and let's say here is uh, h. So in the previous chapter we talked about this range where u is bigger than h so there is no judgment proof problem. So in this case so in this case when we find the solution So when we find the solution, so injurious choice is always uh, equal to x star. So, uh, so, uh, so we are trying to find. So this, uh, so we want to, we want to draw the graph for injurious choice. So we want to draw graph for the injurious choice. So when u is bigger than h, uh, injury choice is always equal to x star. So in other words, we know that uh, if there is no judgment proof problem, uh, injury choice is always equal to x star under strict liability. Uh, that's what we know. Uh, but for but for this green range, 
Now we have in, uh, judgment proof problem. So u is less than h. So we have judgment proof problem. So in this case, we know that uh, integer choice is going to be lower than x star. So for example, uh, if integer asset is here, so for example, integer asset is here, then integer choice is going to be uh, less than x star, so it's gonna be lower than x star. So this is what we know. Then uh, naturally we are interested in the relationship between u and integer choice x hat. So when u gets lower, what's gonna happen to x hat? Uh, this is our uh, question here. So let's see. So look at this equation here. Uh, so in this equation, we have u and we have x hat. So we can uh, study the relationship between u and x hat uh, in this equation. So let's see. Suppose u gets bigger. So suppose u gets bigger or u gets uh, smaller. So suppose you get smaller. So you get smaller. So injurious asset is already lower than age. So we have injurious pro problem, uh, injurious judgment proof problem. And this judgment proof problem gets severe, uh, more severe if you get lower because injury has less and less amount of asset. Then what's going to happen to injurious choice x head? If you look at this equation, uh, left hand side is fixed at 1. So when u gets lower, uh, left hand side is the same, equal to 1. So right hand side must be the same. So because left hand side is fixed at number 1, when there is a change in u, the right hand side should not change. Then what must be true? x hat uh, must change as well uh, to make the balance perfect between uh, the change in u and change in x hat. So that's the only way to make the right hand side uh, constant when u gets lower. So uh, then what should happen to x hat when u gets lower? So let's see. So u is getting smaller, then, uh, then this part must increase uh, to keep right hand side constant, right? So left hand side is the same. So when u gets lower, uh, this black part must increase to make the right hand side constant. Then, uh, how can we increase this, uh, this black box uh, by changing uh, x hat? So let's see, uh, this black box is minus p prime. So this is absolute value of the slope of extant probability function. So extant probability function looks like this. So absolute value is getting bigger, so that means it's gonna get steeper. So it's gonna get steeper. So if you want to make, uh, if you want to make it steeper, you have to reduce x. So here's x. This is probability. Then, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to make the absolute value of slope bigger, so in other words, you want to. Uh, make the slope steeper, uh, you have to reduce x. So in other words, when u is, in, uh, u is decreasing here, x hat must be decreasing as well. So when u is getting smaller, if x hat is also getting smaller, then this right hand side is going to be the same. So this means graphically here, as uh, injurious asset gets lower, so u is getting smaller, uh, x hat is gonna get also smaller. So if I draw a picture, it's gonna be something like this. 
So, uh, so in this picture, uh, in this purple area, we have no judgment proof problem. So here, no judgment proof problem. So in this case, we know that uh, integer choice is always equal to x star. But for the green range, we have judgment proof problem. So integer choice is going to be smaller than x star. So integer choice is going to be uh, to be less careful. So integer choice is going to be smaller than x star. And moreover, uh, we just saw uh, when integer's asset is getting smaller, uh, integer's choice of care is also getting smaller. So we're going we're gonna to have this kind of graph. So if you look at this uh, black graph, in the green range, uh, this graph is increasing. So as u gets increasing, uh, integer choice is also increasing. And uh, once u gets bigger than h, uh, this graph is flat. So integer choice is always equal to x star. Um, so this is uh, uh, so this is what we can uh, we, this is what we can see from uh, injurious choice under strict liability. Mm, and and also uh, so this is gonna appear again uh, in the next page. So make sure uh, this. So mathematically, if you solve this problem, so if you solve this problem, you get solution x hat, and this x hat is gonna be lower than uh, x star. And next, we're gonna think about judgment proof problem. So uh, in uh, judgment proof problem in negligence rule, so we're going to assume uh, due care is equal to x star. So, uh, so make sure you understand this part. And uh, after we finish uh, judgment proof problem under negligence rule, we're going to draw this uh, same picture. And in that picture, we're going to see something like this. So there we're going to see so we're going to see graph uh, something like this. So let me use different uh... so there I'm going to draw the same graph but it's going to look very different. So it's going to be so it's going to be something like this. So this means so so this means uh, under negligence rule uh, as injurer has less and less and uh, asset his choice is equal to x star and in the area of judgment proof problem injurer is gonna still be choosing x star and then. Uh, after some threshold, um, his choice of care is going to be less than x star, and there his choice of care is going to be exactly the same as in strict liability. So we're going to have a slightly different picture uh, under negligence rule, and because of this part, Eventually, we're going to say uh, negligence rule is better than strict liability uh, when there is judgment proof problem because at least for this range, uh, negligence rule is better by inducing x star uh, in interest uh, choice problem. Okay. So I'm going to talk about this later uh, after I finish uh, negligence rule. So let's talk about um, negligence rule now. So, so we still uh, assume uh, judgment proof problem. So interest asset is not enough to cover the possible liability. 
and so we assume uh, due care is equal to x star so under negligence rule Uh, under negligence rule, uh, if injurer is not negligent, so injurer's choice of care is bigger than or equal to due care. Uh, in this case, uh, injurer doesn't have to pay anything, so he's going to keep his asset and we're going to just subtract uh, his uh, care cost. So, uh, when injurer is not negligent, then uh, his payoff is going to be his asset U minus his choice of care uh, X. If he is negligent, so if he is negligent, then injurious uh, uh, payoff is, so if there is accident, so he has asset U and he has to uh, he has to now pay, uh, pay the liability because he is negligent and we subtract uh, care cost plus. So if there is no accident, then nothing happens. So injura has his asset and we got to subtract uh, care cost. So this part is going to disappear. So this part is going to disappear uh, because of judgment proof problem. So, so his problem is this. So injurious payoff is uh, this expression. And we can see that uh, this blue expression is same as in strict uh, liability. So, uh, this is uh, in injurious payoff uh, in uh, judgment proof problem and uh, negligence rule. So, look at the uh, let's think about the first part. So, let's think about this uh, first part. So, we can see that uh, injury is not gonna choose x bigger than due care, right? So, injurer is not going to choose x bigger than uh, due care because uh, it's just decreasing his payoff. So, look at this payoff expression. So, when x gets bigger beyond the due care, then uh, his payoff is decreasing. So, there's, there's no point of increasing care beyond due care. So injurer is not going to choose x bigger than due care. So at best, he's going to choose exactly uh, equal to due care. So we can see that if injurer wants to be non-negligent, he's going to choose exactly uh, due care. So he's not going to ever, he's not, he's not going to choose uh, x strictly bigger than due care. And look at the second problem. So look at the second problem here. So suppose, uh, suppose injurer choose to be negligence. So suppose injurer is going to choose to be negligent. So he's going to choose x smaller than due care. So if due care is here, suppose injurer is going to choose some x in this range, so x less than due care, then what is the best in this range? So if injurer is going to choose something uh, in this range, so x less than due care, what is the best choice? So, injurer wants to choose x so that his payoff is maximized. So, he wants to choose uh, 
choice, uh, he wants to choose x to maximize uh, his expected payoff here. Then what is the solution? So if you look at the previous page, uh, mathematic mathematically this problem is a, uh, exactly equal to this uh, purple problem right here. So solution is going to be accept. So this is the solution. And we know that this is less than x star or due care uh, here. So this means, um, suppose injurer choose to be negligent. So in other words, so injurer is going to choose x smaller than due care. Then he's going to choose x hat. So we can imagine there are many possibility, right? So here x, this x, or this x. There are many possibility, but uh, this at the bottom here, this mathematical problem gives us solution x hat. This means uh, if injurer is going to choose x less than due care, best choice among these many possibility is x hat. So, so we found the two things. First, if injurer wants to be non-negligent, he's going to choose exactly due care. In this case, injurer's payoff is this. And second, if injurer wants to be uh, somehow negligent, he's gonna choose exactly x hat. And in this case, what is interest payoff? Interest payoff in this case So use this expression, this is interest payoff when he chooses to be negligent. So put x hat here so, so injurious payoff in this case is this. So under negligence rule, basically we have to compare two things. So we have to compare blue, uh, we have to compare green and the blue. So we have to compare these two things. So if green is bigger, Injurer is going to choose exactly due care under negligence rule. Otherwise, if blue is bigger than green expression, then injurer is going to choose uh, to be negligent and he's going to choose x hat. And one thing to keep in mind here is so look at this problem. Look at this uh, purple problem. Uh, mathematic mathematically, this problem is exactly the same problem as in strict liability. So this solution must be the same as well. So this means if under negligence rule, the injurer wants to be negligent and he's going to choose x hat, then this choice x hat is going to be the same as in strict liability. So if there is a certain level of u, it, if there is a certain level of uh, injurious asset that induce uh, x hat in injurious choice problem under negligence rule, then under this same amount of injurious asset, if the law were strict liability, injurious choice is going to be the same. So under injurious asset U, under negligence rule, injurer is going to choose X hat. 
then the law doesn't matter even in strict liability with the same amount of injurious asset uh, injurer is gonna still choose asset so choice of care is the same between strict liability and the negligence rule okay so so up to here our conclusion is uh, we compare uh, green and blue expression and if green is bigger uh, for injury it means for injury it is better to to choose uh, uh, due care so he's gonna choose due care and if green is bigger than uh, if blue is green uh, blue is bigger than green uh, then it means uh, being negligent is better for injury so injury is gonna choose x head and here x head is lower than uh, due care So first, so we have to compare these two things. And compare two things, and uh, also uh, keep one thing in mind. This x hat, uh, x hat is not just a number. It is uh, they depend on you. So remember when we studied, so here, so look here, uh, here we saw when u is changing, x set is changing, right? So u gets smaller, then x set is gonna also get smaller. So we saw here. So in this uh, number two expression, make sure when u is changing, x set is gonna change as well. And let's draw a graph. Okay, in the x-axis, I'm gonna draw u. And let's see. Uh, first, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna draw uh, I'm gonna draw this expression he, uh, in this graph. So it's gonna be a straight line. So it's gonna be a straight line, something like this. So this graph represents uh, u minus uh, du care. So du care is just a number. So this is like you want to draw function, uh, something like this. So if you draw this function, it's something like this, right? So uh, it's the same, so same graph. And next I'm gonna draw uh, this graph. Let's see, um, H is here. So we know that uh, in this range, uh, no judgment proof problem, right? And for this range, there is judgment proof problem. Now suppose U is equal to H. Let's say, um, So let's say uh, this function is fu. So look at this expression number two. Uh, it depends on u. Uh, so I can say this is a function, uh, something like fu. So it is a function of u because x set also depends on u. So when u is changing, everything is changing. So we can say this is a function of just one variable, u. So I first I want to find, uh, I want to find this point. So I want to find this point in this picture. So f h. So this means I want to find the, uh, I want to find the function value of this function when u is equal to h. Yeah, then what is it? So, 
So FH. Let's see. So first, uh, U is going to be equal to H. So I'm going to delete and put an H here. Then what about X hat? Uh, what about X hat? So if you, so remember X hat depends on U and what if U becomes equal to H, then what's going to happen to X hat? So look at this problem. So we get uh, X hat uh, from this problem with the underlying uh, uh, purple underlying. So look at this. Uh, look at this problem. So here we have u in this problem, and we get x hat, right? Uh, what if u becomes equal to h? So I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put h here. So if I put h here, then what's gonna happen? Then what is the solution from this problem? So remember, solution from this problem is x hat, right? Solution from this problem is x hat. What I did is I just changed the u to h. Then what's going to happen to the solution of this problem? So if you look at this problem, this problem is very familiar, right? So we know that from the previous exercise, we know that if you solve this problem, what do you get? You get x star. So from this problem, uh, you get solution x star. So in other words, solution of this problem is x hat. And when u becomes h, solution must be equal to x star, right? So when u is equal to h x head must be x star so this is what we can see uh, by looking at the problems so x head is gonna be uh, just equal to x star so these are just equal to uh, x star And we know that x star is equal to x hat. Uh, x uh, x star is equal to x uh, under bar. Do you care under negligence rule? So I'm going to replace x star with x. Do you care? So I found uh, I found f h. Then the next question is. Where is this point in this picture? So we can see that in this picture, the point must be somewhere here below this straight line. Why? Because, so it must be here. Why? Because this point, so this point here, uh, this is um, H minus 2K. And compare this red expression with this blue expression. What is the difference? So minus do you care? Minus do you care? Same h h same. The only ch uh, the only difference is this one minus p uh, one minus p. And remember p is probability. So one minus some probability. So this is gonna be some number, some fraction. And this number is going to be less than number one. So it's going to be just some probability. So you multiply some small number in front of H, then it's going to get smaller. So therefore, uh, this FH must be uh, this uh, blue point in this graph. Yeah, then I'm done. 
So in this pic, in this graph, uh, straight line is uh, number one, and in this graph, I'm gonna draw uh, number two uh, graph for number two expression. Then um, I don't know it's gonna be something like this, right? Uh, so, I'm, so I don't know it's gonna be something like this. I don't know, but the main point here is uh, graph for number two must pass through this blue point uh, in this picture. So the graph for number two must go through this blue point in this picture. That's the main point. Then we are done. So in this picture, let's see. So in this picture, uh, uh, suppose injured asset is here. Let's say, I'm gonna say U1. So suppose injured asset is U1. Then what must be choice of uh, injured choice? Does injured want to choose due care or he wants to be negligent so he wants to choose asset? He's gonna choose due care, why? Because as you can see here, if injured choose due care, his payoff is here. If he choose to be negligent, so he choose exit, it's going to be here. So uh, injured, uh, injured is better off by choosing uh, due care. So he's going to choose due care. And actually, this is what we know uh, from our previous discussion about uh, for this range, there is no judgment proof problem. So in general, it's going to choose exactly equal to x star under negligence rule. So now uh, think about the point where, let's say, think about u2. So in general, asset is smaller than age. So we have judgment proof problem. Then what must be in general's choice? Does in general want to choose uh, due care or um, x hat. So in this case, uh, if injured or choose to be negligent, so he choose x hat, his payoff is here. He choose to be uh, non negligent, so he choose uh, due care, his payoff is lower. So in this case, he's gonna choose to be negligent, he's gonna choose x hat. So same result as in strict liability. But now the difference comes here. Suppose injured asset is here, let's say U3. So in this case, uh, injured asset is lower than age, so we have judgment proof problem, but judgment proof problem is not that severe. Injured asset is very close to uh, age. So so there is judgment proof problem, but problem is not that severe. In this case, what must be the choice of injury? You can see that if injury choose to, uh, if injury choose uh, due care, his payoff is uh, higher than when he choose to be negligent. So we can see injury is going to choose due care or x star even under judgment proof problem. So this is a uh, we are studying negligence rule and we can see that even when there is judgment proof problem as long as judgment proof problem is not that severe injury is willing to choose uh, due care. So there is a threshold here. So there is a threshold here. So there is a threshold here. So for so so for this purple range, uh, there is judgment proof problem and injured choose to be negligent, so he's gonna choose x hat. And remember in this case, 
uh, injury choice of X head under negligence rule is the same as injury choice of X head in strict liability. And what's interesting is this middle range, blue range, look here, we have judgment proof problem under the, uh, we have judgment proof problem, but still under negligence rule, uh, injury is willing to choose due care. So because of the existence of this blue range, we can say uh, negligence rule is better than strict liability because under strict liability, when there is a judgment proof problem, injury is always choosing X head and X head is always lower than X star. So injury always choose X head when there is judgment proof problem under strict liability. But under negligence rule, we have this blue range here. So even when there is judgment proof problem, injury is willing to choose uh, X uh, due care, which is equal to X star. So let me, uh, let me complete our previous graph. So this, let's say, so H is here. So when there is no judgment proof problem, so for this green range, we know that injurious choice, so this uh, represents injurious choice. So this is injurious choice. So injury choice is always equal to X star. And under strict liability, uh, we know that as U gets lower in judgment proof problem, uh, injury is choosing X head under uh, strict liability. But under negligence rule, injury is choosing due care or X star up to here. So this red represents injury's choice under negligence rule. So this is under negligence rule and black is for strict liability. Uh, and then uh, after this threshold, after this blue threshold, uh, under negligence rule, uh, injury now switch to X head, and this X head must be equal to X head under strict liability. So same graph as here. So this is X head under negligence rule, and we can see that uh, X head under negligence rule and strict liability are the same. So let's see, so uh, conclusion. So for this green range, so for this green range, uh, there is no judgment proof problem, There's no judgment proof problem and uh, they uh, injury always choose X star under strict liability and uh, negligence rule. And for this purple range, there is judgment proof problem. So judgment proof problem and injury's choice under negligence rule is equal to injury choice under strict liability. So for this green range and purple range, uh, the effect of strict liability and negligence rule are the same. So they are equally good uh, in the sense that the result is the same. And the difference comes in the middle. So in this 
blue range. What's happening? There is judgment proof problem. And under negligence rule, injure, choose optimal care. So negligence rule works fine, perfect in negligence rule. So uh, strict liability, uh, injure does not choose uh, X star. So injure is going to choose X set under strict liability. So uh, conclusion is, uh, if we compare uh, strict liability and negligence rule under judgment proof problem, and it turns out uh, negligence rule is better in dealing with judgment proof problem in the sense that there is a blue range as you can see here. So negligence rule outperforms strict liability. So strict liability cannot induce socially optimal level of care in this blue range, but negligence rule can do that. So, uh, so it seems that when there is judgment proof problem, uh, negligence rule is better. Uh, so, uh, so again, remember, uh, what we are doing here is we want to think about various uh, situations. So we want to think about various situations and we find that in certain situations, strict liability is better in others, negligence rule is better and so on. And here in this section, we are thinking about, uh, we are thinking about judgment proof problem and it seems that negligence rule is better.